E. Dot Darling here. It's my cool new rap name with uh, Darling Data. And uh, today we are going to talk about common table expressions in SQL Server. The reason we're going to talk about common table expressions in SQL Server is because I am absolutely sick of common table expressions in SQL Server. Uh, they don't make queries more readable. Uh, formatting does. Formatting makes queries very readable, especially if you don't put leading commas in your queries. Uh, and they don't have any magical performance impact benefit. They are not good, great, wonderful, not spectacular, superb, extraordinary. They're none of these things. <coughs> there is not a, they're just exhausting at this point. They, they, they tire me. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever, ever wonder why I look or sound so tired, you can probably blame common table expressions. All right, so let's run this query, and let's get a query plan just to set a baseline, right? So we get the estimated plan for this, and uh, now this is what I would call a fairly typical user query where we access one index on a table. Uh, you may have seen other videos of mine recently where we talked about how multiple indexes on a single table uh, can uh, be used and can uh, used all together to make a query happen. Right? You can have key lookups, you can have an index intersection, you can have index union, and all of those things can use multiple indexes on the same table to make, make, make it a query happen. But uh, in this case, we're just touching one index to get our data uh, for this query. All right? Now, <clears throat> where common table expressions don't completely uh, befuddle, baffle, and uh, what's another good B word? I, don't know, I can't think of one. If you think of one, leave one in the comments. Uh, where, where I don't hate them is when you sort of like cascade stuff down through a common table expression. So like in this case, SQL Server is smart enough to sort of optimize away the fact that we have this thing in the middle. All right, so if we run this query, or let's just get the estimated plan, uh, we only touch the user's table once in here. Right, okay, fair enough. SQL Service, pretty smart with that. Uh, you can even do slightly more complicated things and still have SQL Server be fairly smart about it. So here we're going to have one common table expression where we select this, another common table expression where we select this from the preceding common table expression, and then a third common table expression, which I just noticed I have misaligned slightly, uh, where we uh, select from the preceding common table expression and, and apply another filter. So did I do that all wrong? Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, no, that, uh, that looks a little funny. Uh, we'll fix that later. So if we get the estimated plan for this, SQL Server is, again, smart enough to sort of abstract away those useless abstractions that you have stuck into your query and just give us one single solitary index seek where all of the predicates that we, oh, come on, tooltip, you are being so good there, where all of the predicates that we care about are applied to that one axis of the index. We have our seek predicate to the ID, right? Because that's the clustered primary key of the table. We can seek right to that. And then we have a couple residual predicates before I lost my finger in a tragic green screen accident uh, where we look at the date filter and the display name filter that we applied uh, uh, in, in the other common table expressions. <clears throat> where things change a little bit with common table expressions is when we introduce uh, the top syntax to our, our CTEs. Now, this, isn't going, this, this one here isn't going to force SQL Server to rerun the initial syntax multiple times, but it is going to change the query plan in sort of in a, a weird way. So if I get the estimated plan for this, it looks kind of weird now, doesn't it? It looks kind of funny, a bit unexpected. We have this series of tops and filters where different predicates are applied. Now, when we touch the, the clustered index, we still apply that same initial seek predicate, right? We still look for where ID, we still seek to where ID equals one. But because we introduce top and we set what's called a row goal inside of that, inside of each one of the common table expressions uh, that, we, that we executed or that we, I mean, they all execute together, kind of. Uh, we have a top and then a filter, and then a top, and then a filter, and then another top. So we have the three tops, 
and two filters. The two filters are going to be on the additional predicates that we applied. And thank you, SQL Server Management. I must have made Aaron Stilato real mad. SQL Server Management Studio is stabbing me in the back today. Uh, today we have uh, we have uh, the first filter, which hits uh, the predicate on creation date. And then we have another filter, which applies the predicate uh, on display name, where that equals community over there. And so introducing top into your common table expressions sort of introduces a bit of a fence because of the row goals that get introduced there. Uh, a slightly more uh, well, verbose example of that would be uh, these common table expressions that we're going to look at next. Now in the first one, <coughs> we are joining uh, users to comments right, right there. And then in the, uh, the, th the second one, sorry, not the third one, there's only two. Uh, there is no three, there is only zoo. Uh, we are joining the post table and the votes table, right? And the, the post table gets joined both to uh, the, um, the comments table and the users table from the first common table expression. And then the votes table we're joining to the post, uh, post table, right? So if we look at the query plan for this, SQL Ser we're going to see that SQL Server's query uh, cost-based optimizer, cost-based query optimizer, wa was free to rearrange the joins uh, to suit its own cost-based needs. All right, so we have this, it joins uh, comments to votes over here, it joins uh, the post table down over here, and then it joins the users table up over here. Right. Now, if we were to go and stick a top in our first common table expression only, because right, I don't wanna, I don't wanna add a bunch of tops in, too many, too many tops spoil the broth. Uh, if we add a top in here, but not here, we'll see the query plan change and the, the join between users and comments will be fenced off. And what I mean by that is now we have this top operator here and we have uh, the join between users and comments behind that top over here. Now, sometimes it's tough to get behind a top, but in this case, uh, it, it worked out pretty well. So we have our top operator, and we have users and comments over here, and then SQL Server was free to join uh, votes and posts in whatever order it chose in the second common table expression. So the top operator will <coughs> fence off, at least in the, the, the current iteration of SQL Server's cost-based optimizer, the top operator will fence off things inside of a common table expression but neither uh, a common table expression nor a common table expression with a top inside of it will materialize the query inside of the common table expression. Where common table expressions start running into problems is when you start referencing them multiple times in your query. Now I showed you where like if you stack them and sort of run down through them, things can turn out okay. But let's look at what happens when you reference common table expressions multiple times, uh, sort of without that stacking effect. All right, so uh, the first execution plan that we get here, uh, back, to, back to baseline, where we uh, only seek into the user's table once. Now, if we join that common table expression to itself, we are now going to have two seeks into the user's table right, because we had to rerun the expression inside of that common table twice. It's actually not really a table at all. It's more like a tabular, right, it's a common tabular expression because we are not materializing this result anywhere. And if we do that a third time, we will now see that we touched the user's table three times. We have the one, we have the two, we have the three. Isn't that a kick in the head? Uh, I think an easier way to sort of uh, get across what happens when you do that <clears throat> is if we were to just union all and sort of explicitly select from the common table expression twice, we would go back to seeing the uh, two accesses of the user's table with the concatenation operator over here which, uni which unioned all of those two results. So the same thing would happen if we did union. But just think of it as just like this query 
union all this query again, right? Because the common, even though you make this reference once here, each reference out here means you have to rerun this expression, all right? <clears throat> now, where common table expressions or derived tables or anything like that can be useful is when you need to do something in a query that you can't do in a single step. Uh, a pretty common thing uh, would be to uh, generate, like if you wanted to find duplicate results or you wanted to find like the first result, using something like row number is a really common way to do that. The thing is you can't filter on row number here, right? You can't, you can't say something like where uh, v, where n equals, oops, or n equals zero, because n is uh, in the ex select list, and the select list, if you're familiar at all with logical query processing, happens way at the end. The where clause, join clause, stuff like that ha occurs way earlier when, uh, the, when the query is built, when the shape of the query is generated. So we can't filter on this here. All right, we'll just get an error, an invalid column name n. So we have to do stuff like this outside of a common table expression, right? So if we run this, it is perfectly valid syntax. Now, this sort of gets into other, uh, you know, um, you know, sort of query tuning dilemmas and, and things that you might run across in query plans. But this is one of those cases where when I see a filter operator, I understand why it's there and I'm not angry at it because we have to generate that expression for the row number before we can filter on it. So we have to do all this work to get all the data we want and in this case, uh, well, I mean, for various reasons. I'm on SQL Server 2022. I am in compat level 160. And so I'm getting the, neat, the, the cool feature uh, batch mode on row store automatically. Uh, I mean, that's been available since SQL Server 2019, but it's only Enterprise Edition. I'm using Developer Edition, so I get all the Enterprise Edition features, which is why Developer Edition is like a great gateway drug for Microsoft, because you start doing all this development in Developer Edition, and you're like, wow, what great performance I have, and then you move it over to standard, like you, your, your production environments in standard edition and all your queries are complete stink bombs. And Microsoft's well, like, well, okay, well, just give us $5,000 more a core and you're all set. <clears throat> you know, our, our dreams of a, uh, a feature flag for developer edition to remove um, uh, enterprise edition features is, is long in the making. Doesn't exist. But I'm, I'm sure they're working hard on it, so you don't run into that this awful this awful conundrum quandary con conundrum. Doesn't matter. Anyway, common table expressions can be useful when you have to do stuff like this, because you couldn't do this all in a single step. Just don't expect doing this to have any magic performance benefits for you. Uh, common table expressions just aren't helpful in that way. All right. Cool. Uh, hopefully, I have absolved, uh, absolved and alleviated you of all your uh, your mis mis misconce misconceiverations about common table expressions. Uh, they truly do not help performance in any way. Just for just just for existing, uh, they don't make queries any more readable. Just for existing, again, query formatting is more important for making a query readable than jamming a completely unreadable query inside of a common table expression. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed, your, you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And uh, I will see you in, an, in, in the next video, which temporally could happen at any moment now. It may have already happened by the time I say this, which is really crazy. It's just, just impossible to tell. Anyway. Thank you for watching, and um, uh, catch, smell you later, stinky pants.